Hello everyone, Roy Kirkups here. This is a picture I took of the bell tower at the Old Mill shopping mall in Solvang, California. So Solvang is a town in Southern California about 45 miles northwest of Santa Barbara, which was founded by Danish immigrants in 1911. And most of the buildings in the town are in Danish style. So in 2018, I went on an eight day road trip through California with my daughter and we stopped at many places such as Sequoia National Park, Kings Canyon National Park. We went to San Francisco, we went to the Humboldt Redwoods, way north of San Francisco. And at some point we drove down from Monterey along the coast to Solvang, which was our last stop. So on my website I have a blog for each day. So we stayed at the Frederick Inn in downtown Solvang and we walked around a little bit and that's when I uh, took this photo. So I printed it on matte paper and with an inkjet printer and pre-treated it so we can color it with either oils or acrylics. Today we'd like to use acrylic. <laughs> First I sprayed it twice with drying time in between with golden gloss archival varnish to fix the ink. So that prevents them from bleeding for the next step which is to brush on gloss, um, golden gloss glazing liquid which is an acrylic medium and when it's dry it turns transparent and then you can paint on it with oils or acrylics. In this case as I mentioned earlier I'm going to use acrylics. So first we need to tape it off a little bit because I want to do something different with the sky and the rest of it. So let's do it. Let's start by taping it off. We're going to use a combination of masking tape and masking fluid for the more detailed parts. It's going to take some time, but it's good. We don't have to be really careful not going over the lines when we're going to the sky. So I would like to add some opaque impasto style acrylic paint to the sky and then color the rest of the image also with acrylics, with acrylic glazes. So you can hear we have some, I think they're called Cooper Hawks flying around here. It's funny, when we were on our, Katie and I, my daughter and I were on our trip, we FaceTimed my wife when we arrived, just after we arrived here in Solvang, and she recognized it immediately, looking at the background, and so she said, bring me back some chocolates, so that's what we did do this day, we bought some chocolates. ice cream for the day a 
was a nice sunny day. So this one actually was a blue sky. Okay, let's see. I will do this both. Don't have to be too precise either. See, there's some pieces sticking out here, but that's fine. It's the bells that I want to do with the masking fluid. Go more than halfway. See, so I can do that point up there. Still think I can do it with masking tape. There we go. I would think this is probably also helping that we have the coating on now. I mean, if this was regular inkjet paper, we would have a hard time getting ripping off the masking tape later. I would think the paper would also at least partially come off. I think it's always fun to take off the masking tape when it's painted. It always looks good. Okay, now let's do the bells. I'm not too good at this part, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm using, using a round brush to do this. I'm sure this doesn't turn out well, especially this small bracket here that holds the bells. You can always paint that back in. We kind of want to put it on thick so it comes off easier later. There we go. The last bell. Oops, that was a big blob. Let's add a little bit more back here. There we go. And this now needs to dry. It's going to take a day, probably. So I will see you after that. 
it's dry, the masking fluid that is, right here. So I stopped doing this maybe yesterday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's almost 10 now, so 18 hours. Probably was drier earlier. So we can paint it now. So let's take some titanium white. And ultramarine blue. And then we start at the top, the flat brush. And adding in that paint. So we'd like to go for that impasto look again. So I'm putting it on pretty thick. And big blobs. to go for a little bit of a vignette effect. I'm going a little bit lower on the corners here. Adding in more white. So we're getting a gradient going from dark to light. And we'll also extend into the previous color here and there. Again, more white. So I want to cover it well, so we don't see the photo underneath.
I hope I can find these belts later. Can be a little thicker here. So I'm kind of reducing that curvature too now. It's going more straight. The curvature of the colors of the different layers of colors. Let's put it on a little lighter here, thinner, so I can find those bells later and hopefully they come off well. Okay. Using a lot of paint here. Or maybe the last time he yeah, has white. There we go. So now let's try it. Now that it's still wet, let's take the tape off. So far, so good. So I'm take, taking it off in the direction that I put it on, because I overlap. I look here, some of that masking tape. That worked well too. We see a bell. There's another one. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Still, let's try to get that middle bell cleared. Let's use this. Let's see. Yeah, 
Got it. Ta-da! That is pretty good. Now we're going to color the image. And the overall building has like a slightly reddish brown pinkish look. So first let's grab some golden glass glazing liquid. And then burnt sienna. And some cadmium red. Take a little bit of that burnt sienna. Put it into the Glazing liquid. Let's see if it's thick enough. Yeah, we could use a little more of both colors. There we go. So I'm not putting much pressure on this at all. I'm kind of like literally glazing over it. It's almost as just the paint that's on the brush is touching the photo and not the brush itself. But you can see how transparent it is, and you don't have to paint every single brick. The structure of the photo is coming through. And it's the, the gray values of the photo that actually change the color that we're working with. It's making it either more or less saturated. The darker the grays, the more desaturated and dark. The lighter, the more saturated the colors are. There's a lot of the same colors on this building. The roof here is a little bit more orange. And this part is lighter, but since the building itself looks lighter, as what I just mentioned, I'm still going to use this same paint here, because it will still look different than this part here. I mean, like a, a, a lighter value.
Yeah. It's pretty good. This is actually white here, this building, so we're going to leave that. This part too. Could add some color here. And then let's add a little bit of yellow to this. So we're getting more of an of an orange. Let's see how this turns out. Okay, let's do this. To be a little bit careful with the sky that's still wet. Try not to touch it. There we go. Now for the other roofs. This one actually originally let's get see if we can get rid of this. These are more grayish. Actually, I see I forgot this part of the building. Let's go back to the color we had before. Going over the tree too here, but that's okay. Okay, so that roof originally is gray, but let's add, let's take some orange, like a pure, pure orange with some more glazing liquid, not much, just need very little, clean the brush. Pick up some of that orange. Let's see how this turns out. No, not that one. This one. This one. Yeah, that's good. Let's, let's go with this. There we go. And then this roof here has a little bit more brown to it, so take, let's take some burnt umber. Mix that in that previous color we used for the building. Let's see how this turns out. Of course, when you hand color, you, you don't have to stick with the original colors of the scene. We can totally make it up. Here I'm kind of going with the real colors as they were.
there. The clock faces will leave them as they are. I like the bells too as they are. Maybe add some color to this chimney. Okay. Now, you know what? I'd like that orange for this roof and it will look more brighter on the lighter roof here, so I'm going to add some some orange there. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, I forgot this little roof here. There we go. So, about the tree. So the tree was nice and green, but when I turned it black and white, I did not really focus on the tree. If I wanted this to be nice and bright green, coloring it, it would have to be much lighter, as I mentioned earlier, with the with the saturation colors, with the, with the saturation of the colors. But of course, the tree is a little dark. So what we could do, so what we could do, we could start coloring it, see how the green turns out. If it's a little too dark, what we can do is we can just paint over it kind of um, maybe even in pasto style as we did with the sky but let's see what it looks like if we just add some transparent green to it so this is chromium oxide green Of course, the more paint we put in it, the less transparent it becomes, the more opaque. Yeah, see if it becomes more opaque, more color, but also we lose the structure of the leaves underneath. Why don't we do this? We get rid of a little bit of this paint. You actually could still wipe it off. It's still wet. Actually, the glazing liquid extends the drying time of acrylics. Let's take a smaller brush and we're just going to paint over it. Let's take a little bit of white also and some cadmium yellow. We're just gonna drop that in.
because now we're losing all that texture from the from the leaves of the tree. Let's put in some more highlights, add a little bit more white to this, some yellow. Even a little bit more white. Get some of the brightest highlights now. Let's cover the, the tree everywhere where we can see it. And now let's grab some black and we'll add some of the darker shades. Be a little darker. It's almost grey, we probably need to make a new mix of green and black because we added a lot of white to this. So I'm mixing some black with pure green. So we get a better dark green. There we go. And then a little bit more of that dark towards the bottom. Add some more black. See what the 
if you make this the darkest at some darkest spots. So the original tree, the leaves are gone now. Pretty much painted over it. A little bit of improv going on. Didn't plan to do this, but still turned out pretty nice, I think. Just add some structure here and there. So here we go, it's all done. A little different than what I anticipated, but regarding the tree. But I think this still turned out pretty good. So what we have here is an inkjet print on matte paper, coated it so we can paint on it. And then we paint it in the sky and the tree now with acrylics, opaque acrylics, and color the rest of the buildings with acrylic glazes. So I hope you liked the video. Please hit that like button and I will see you next time.